UFC 300 was one of the most spectacular UFC events. One of the best night of combat sports that we have ever seen. Okay, top to bottom, ridiculous fights. Even though a lot of people went out there and talked sh before it, you're all eating your words now. And guess what? Look at this. Look at who I am joined by today. The one, the only, the victorious at the weekend, Hanato Money Moicano. Brother, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me here. You are legend and you know it. Thank you so much <laughs> for the platform, Michael Bisping. Bro, we got a lot to talk about. So Hinato is going to stick with us for a little bit. We're going to go through some of the other fights and stuff as well because I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, and Anthony Smith is in training camp, obviously. So um, Jalen Turner, he's a bad man. Okay, he's a tremendous striker. Jalen, I honestly, I'm not just saying this. I've got so much respect for you. And just as a person and as a fighter, you're incredible. And I know how amazing you are on the ground and your wrestling game's good as well. But I was concerned for you in this fight. I was. I know Jalen as well, but we have a very good rapport, you know. So I was concerned for you in that fight. But you, I didn't say you'd lose, but I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But that makes you even I was better. the underdog. You can say you're not going to hurt yeah. my feelings, my brother. No, 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 exactly. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm saying, like, I think everybody yeah. was like, shit, Jalen Turner's the real deal. Yeah. Right? Talk me through it. The floor is yours. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. Uh, he Maybe, uh, not 100%, he's taller than me. Uh, he has more knockout power. He's a, the better striker. He has a good takedown defense. But Moicano cannot afford to lose. I'm not losing, you know? I can't afford to lose. And if they if they throw me Max Holloway, if they throw me Khabib, if they, I'm not going to lose to anybody. I will find a way to win. I'm going to, to find a way, you know? I am very well-rounded. Uh, if if somebody is better than me at the strike, I will try wrestling. If they are better at wrestling, I will keep the distance, you know? I am the real deal right now on the division, and I'm going to prove even though a lot of people still think that I'm the underdog of the division. But like you say, Jalen Turner, very, very tough guy to fight because he's so tall. 6'3 for the lightweight is crazy. Uh, the, the range was, was hard to find the distance, you know. On the, on, the, on the end of the first round, I was feeling, okay, he's tired now. He was touching me. I was, I was okay, I'm winning the round, so I will keep on the feet, like, take it easy and, and got the round. And he got me good, and he almost knocked me out. But guess what? I'm not losing. But let's talk about that, because Jalen's tall, but he's also ridiculously skilled. He's really good on the feet. You beat, you beat him. You beat one of the best kickboxers in the lightweight division or in the whole UFC. And he's got good takedown defense. Look at the fight with Mataj Gamra, right? He was very, very competitive. But when he hit you with that straight right hand, right, the whole arena just went, oh, because yes. you dropped hard, right? Yeah. It looked like you were unconscious, but yeah. you weren't unconscious. You were like no. clearly like still kind of sitting up. You just dropped yeah. your hard. Jalen walked away trying to get the walk off KO. What was going through your mind right then? My, my mind was this I have to pay right now and I'm going to make him pay. <laughs> I'm going to make him pay. Don't do that mistake again because I'm not – I'm. You're not, you're not putting me away. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but I, but I fought Rafael dos Anjos in four-day notice, five rounds. So I, I, I don't have a quit in me. I cannot quit. And if I, if I go to a fight, I'm going to win. You cannot count me out. And he did, and, and then he paid for that. Mm, yeah, no, no, he certainly did. I mean, once you got that takedown. That body lock takedown of yours, by the way, you get everybody with that. Very, very good work. Yeah. Then you get the mount. And then you just go to town, right? Yeah. After getting dropped like that, to turn it around a complete 180 degrees, how good did it feel when you were on top, in mount, smashing down? Talk to me about that feeling. I was just thinking, money, money, I want 300K. <laughs> I want the bonus, but I knew what would be hard to, to get. Like you say, stellar card. We have former champions fighting the first fight, but... But to be completely honest with you, I was just happy. I'm happy right now. I have five wins streak on the lightweight division. That's not an easy thing to do. And uh, I, I just hope I keep winning. 
keep doing my thing and one day I will have the opportunity to be a champion like you. Yeah, I mean, right now you're on a three-fight win streak. Drew Dolber, Brad Five. Miguel. Five? On the lightweight, on the lightweight. Check uh, the topology. Oh, no, you're right. You're right because what was Dos Anjos uh, a catchweight? 160, 160. Yeah, yeah. That's so not that like was a catchweight. Yeah, yeah. So you win the distance with him as well. Alexander Hernandez, Jai Herbert, Drew Dober, and now Jalen Turner. Um, so you're going to be highly ranked now on the microphone. You were brilliant. And we're going to get to the other stuff in a minute because I want to hear all about it. But Paddy the Baddy Pimbler, talk to me. Come on, Manchester, Paddy Pimbler. What's on your mind? Uh, I, I don't know yet. I was I, I saw people saying that he, he's going to fight Bobby Green, right? I don't know why. I think Bobby Green called him out, right? I was too busy. But I don't know what UFC is going to do. But of course, if they want me to fight Paddy Pimblet, I will fight Paddy Pimblet. I think he's a high profile. Everybody knows him. And I think it's easy money. I think P Paddy Pimblet is easy money. Today, I watched his video doing the reaction video of my fight. And he said, no, I like Moicano. Why, did you, why, did you, why didn't you call me out? But guess what? One day we can maybe do the, team, the tooth, the ultimate fight, and we can be coaches in the ultimate fight. I say, okay, I think, that, I think that's fair enough, but uh, it, it's, a, it up, it's up to FC, you know? Uh, I'm not trying to rush anything. I, I just want to fight as soon as possible, BSP. I don't have much time to lose. So uh, if UFC wants me keep me busy. I want to fight in Manchester or I want to fight in Vegas, International Fight Week. I'm ready. I didn't have any injury, so I, I will rest this week. Next week, I will be training and waiting for my next opponent. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm well said. On the microphone, you were talking about the, uh, the Economist. What was his name again? Uh, Mises, Ludwig von Mises. Ludovic von Mises, look at look at this. And I'll tell money my car now. Just when you think the man's a knucklehead, that UFC fighters. <laughs> but you know, I am a knucklehead. I am a yeah, knucklehead. Yeah, me, me, me and you both, and the crowd knows that. Um, yeah. what's his face? Uh Jordan Peterson crazy, gave you right? a shout out on Twitter saying the world has gone crazy when this, that, and the other, and the prize fighters are quoting famous economists, crazy. something like that. I'm sure yeah. you know what he said. Yeah, unreal. Not only him, but Ben Shapiro, and if Elon Musk tweets something about it, I think people uh, people are in need of this message, you know, because uh, the reports uh, of the last week, the inflation is going up again. It's just because the uncontrolled debt of all states, is not only America, every state, every state in the Western world is spending more money than they are uh, getting. So it's just like you're in your home. When you spend more than you keep it, you're going to be in debit, and, and that's why they keep printing, printing money, and that makes the inflation worse. So I think it's a cultural thing. You know, we need to understand about money and politics to keep that. Because uh, I know you live in America now for a long time, and, and think about the inflation. The houses in California, the prices are crazy. In Florida, are crazy. Like in a couple of years, it's going to be hard for the, for the, for the regular, regular guy to get a family, it to already, get a house. It already is. Yeah, but it's going to be worse because if they try to control the yield and the and the and the and the interest rates, they're going to make worse because the rich is going to be rich and the poor is going to be poor because they will keep printing money and make like stuff like stocks and houses even more expensive. And the rich people will buy these things and will get more rich. And us, we're going to be poor, so we have to fix that. And we fix that through education, to economics, to, to money, and to Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> but you're absolutely right with the Bitcoin as well. But so Ludovic's message, for people that don't know, tell them because obviously, you know, you went viral for that moment and it was a great clip. And what a way to use your platform. Well, well done, Renato. But for those people that don't know, and I might be one of them, tell yeah. people basically in layman's terms, what he stands for and it's what the very, message is. Let me show. This is the book, Ludwig von Mises. In Portuguese, it's it called Six Lessons and why it's so important. I recommend you to read a lot of things. You have to understand about history. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read it. Read this. Uh, this, this guy, he was an economist, uh, very well known, and he went to Argentina uh, on, on the on the 19, 1930s or something. 
and he did six lectures explaining people about economics. So this, so somebody uh, transcribed that to a book. So the first lecture was about capitalism. The second one, socialism. The third one, interventionism. The fourth one, about inflation. The fifth one, about um, uh, investments um, uh, abroad, right? Like, uh, I don't know, I don't remember the word. And the sixth one was politics and ideas. So in this book, he's, he explained how capitalism started on the Europe uh, after the, the, the Middle Ages, right? And the uh, and, uh, uh, Industrial Revolution and, and what comes with that. And then he explained about socialism. He, he explained why socialism is not going to work because the, the the value of the price. And then he explained the, the, the economy the double economy, like the socialism and the capitalism together. And then we have interventionism and then we have taxes and then we have inflation. That is the people printing more money that we, that, that we need. And he go to these topics and he explain in a very easy way. You don't need to be a scholar. You're just a regular guy. You're going to read that. And this is going to blow your mind. He explains so much things about, and this happens over and over with, many societies uh before us so th this is a every time that you start to degenerate the money it, it's a proven theory proven theory yes because every time the society start to give welfare every time the society start to to degenerate the morals and the money uh you guys the, the society is going to collapse so it's a very easy book very it's not it's not big and you're going to understand i think you be you is smart guy you're gonna sit and you're going to read that like in two, three hours, and it's going to change your mind. Read that and then talk to me. It's going to change your mind. It doesn't need to change my mind. I'm with you, brother. I'm yeah, with you. Yeah, I know. I know. And what, I know. And what, was it, what was it called one more time? The name in Portuguese is The Six Lessons. The uh, Six Lessons. The okay. Six Lessons. But in, I don't know in English. I think it's human behavior. Let me ask. Let me. Can I, can, hold on, hold on. Can I give you the seventh lesson? Yes. You know what the seventh lesson is? No. Never underestimate Alex Pereira. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. I tell you what, go on, you're just looking up the, the English title. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the hum, uh, human action, attractive on economics. Action. Human action. Okay. Good if you go music, yeah. All right. So obviously Saturday crazy. Night. Alex Pereira is crazy, right? And the, and the way he man. did, like, stop, the referee, stop. Yeah, stop. yeah, yeah. Ah, it was crazy because, listen, I I don't know why, right? I just had a feeling. It wasn't based upon technical ability. It was when I saw Jamal Hill interacting with Alex at the Apex, and he kind of like, it was kind of like two gorillas establishing dominance. You know what I'm saying? It was like two yes. animalistic beasts. Yes. Like, who's in charge here? And yeah. Alex is very quiet. So Jamal was doing all of the talking. And when I saw that, I was like, that's it. This Jamal doesn't care. He's not scared. He's not intimidated. And he's got power and all the rest of it. So I just had a feeling that he was going to do it. Well, I was wrong on an absolutely gigantic level. I will never underestimate Alex Pereira again. I mean, as you say, he gets to kick in the groin. He's like, no, brother. No, I've backed him up against the fence. No, I'm I've cooking. got him exactly where <laughs> I want him. I'm cooking, bro. Leave yeah. me alone. Back off. Um, yeah. yeah. What a guy. Unbelievable. But you know what is funny? Because I had the same feeling. I just started a podcast. Show me the money. I'm going to bring you to the show. Uh, we, I start a podcast with Gilbert Burns. And we, do, and we bring Jamal Hill. And he was so confident. You know, yeah. he was saying, man, I'm going to fuck him. People are not going to believe. And I say, okay, this guy know something that I don't know. So maybe he, he got a shot against Alex Pereira. But when you, you know that, when you, you are a striker, when you're fighting a guy that double champion kickboxing and that and has that knockout power, it, it's just, it, it's just not good to try to strike against him. You have to shoot for takedowns. You have to clinch at least on the first round because he's too powerful, right? And the technique is on point too. So what can you do? So, so I think I'm going to choose my words carefully here because I have a lot of respect for Jamal. You know this as a fighter, and I'll ask you about your nerves on Saturday, but it seemed like, you know, it's easy to talk 
to the media and be confident. It's easier to get on my podcast and be confident. It's easy to walk around and be confident. But when you're stood in there with Alex Pereira and he's just given the bow and arrow, <laughs> right? And you see him. Really? And then all, ah. of a, all of a sudden you're thinking about all of the knockouts and everything. All of a sudden that confidence, it goes out yeah. the window, you know, because yeah. Jamal, I'm not saying he was scared. I'm not saying that at all, but he was very respectful of the threat. So he was being hesitant and waiting. They were playing with the lead hands. Uh, Pereira's doing that. He's kicking a little bit just to just to get the distance. And then when he had it, boom, one shot drops him hard. I mean, it was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. As, a, as, as a Brazilian, what is the, I hope you understand this expression, what's the temperature in Brazil over Alex Pereira? Did, uh, is he a big, big name down there? Uh, um, Bispe, I didn't know until I went to Brazil last time. He and Charles Oliveira are the biggest stars, the huge stars. Like people love them because I think it's because the humble beginnings, right? He 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 used to work on a tidy shop, so uh, he was a alcoholic or something. So a lot of problems overcome everything, and then beat Adesanya. I don't know how many times, and then moved to the UFC with not many three times. Went to uh, went to the UFC with no many fights, and he's doing history. How crazy is that? People are comparing him to John Jones. If he moves to to to, to the heavyweight, and imagine if he beat Aspinall, he's going to be one of, one of the best ever. Mm. A guy that doesn't have jujitsu. So I know people give him the black belt, but let's be honest. No, that, no. Has he got a black belt? Yeah. They, no. No. Somebody the just fuck gave him a black belt. <laughs> On, on, on the canvas, after the fight, they, they put a black belt on him and say, man, this is not the way to do it, right? Oh. So, oh. imagine that. <laughs> no, this is what happens. You know, there's so many black, black belts, belts out there yeah. because yeah. they do well. And then the master wants to say, Alex Pereira is a black belt under me or my whatever. Or, or, yeah, my, he's my student. He's my student. My God. I, uh, that's just crazy. Him versus Tom Aspinall, I don't think that's a good idea. I just said, I'll never underestimate Alex Pereira again. Could he knock him out on the feet? Yes, he could, for sure. And there he ah, is. Look, getting the black belt, the black belt. That's insane. That is insane. Nice shorts, though. Nice shorts. Hey, what was your thought, real quick? When they, when Max Holloway, Pereira, and there was one more that got custom shorts, and Bobby Green, I think, got money just, shorts. Just engaging, just engaging. Just engaging. Yeah. Where was the Moicano shorts? It's all about money. <laughs> but they didn't give me yet. But I like it, you know, because I like before when, w- before Venom and Reebok, do you guys remember? Everybody had their own chore, shorts. Uh, Sehon used to have a, a, a Muay Thai short. I like it that. I think, uh, I think UFC should allow people to have yeah. more liberty with the, with the shorts and stuff because that makes it easy for the public to connect with the fighters, right? I like a lot yeah. the short of Max Holloway. Yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah, the Max Holloway ones were cool. The Pereira ones were really cool. I understand they need to be Venom, but I honestly don't understand why they can't do that uh, every time, why they can't let you have your own design. And maybe you just say, okay, I want this design and you'll keep it for a a year. Every time they can't be designing new shorts for 32 fighters every weekend. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't understand that. And it does. It adds a little bit of personality and 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 flavor and they could sell those shorts and make some money off it and stuff like that. Anyway, Aspinall. Listen, could Pereira knock him out on the feet? Of course, right? Yeah. But you know Tom Aspinall's going to Have you trained with Tom Aspinall? Have you trained with him? I, I haven't. My son has, though. Yeah? And my son's like 240. He's big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't trained with Tom, but when I do, I'm going to whoop his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to whoop his ass. I always say to him all the time, I'm like, I'll take you down, Tom. And he's like, come on then, have a go. I'm like, well, not, not here, not here. Later. But the problem with Tom Aspinall is he has jiu-jitsu, has wrestling, very fast. I have weight that moves like a lightweight. He's crazy. He started jiu-jitsu when he was like eight or nine years old with his father. His father's a very good grappler and he's got great wrestling as well. Anyway, never mind that. In just under three weeks, UFC will be back in Brazil. Pereira versus Magomed Ankalaev, main that, eventing that. Do you think that's going to happen? No, I don't think. I don't think he should do that. I think Ankalaev is the worst fight for Pereira because if you remember Pereira fighting Iri Proracha, he committed. Uh, he made a lot of mistakes on the grappling, on the 
he was he was like not defending the takedowns very well on the cage. He was like trying guillotines and pulling guards. I think Pereira still has a lot to improve. And a guy like Ankalaev, I think, is is the worst opponent for him because he's very well rounded, Russian guy, good wrestling. And especially with that amount of time, there is not much time for him to prepare for Ankalaev. I wish he he fought somebody else before he fought Ankalaev or even have tr- time to train. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's a terrible idea. You don't want to fly down on three weeks. Number one, he's got to do the weight cuts again. He's got to travel down there. He's got to go through the whole fight week, you know, and then he's and got he to fight. His, he broke his toe, right? And he broke his toe. And he's got to fight a Dagestani. Yeah, you know what I no, mean? That's not good. Oh, Never no. good. Never yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, all right, all right. Tom Aspinall in Manchester. Screw it. Let's go. Let's uh, go. You mentioned Charles Oliveira a second ago. Do you know Charles? You got a good relationship? I know him. I know him. Uh, we, we are not friends, but uh, I am a huge fan of Charles Oliveira. I think uh, the things that he done by for himself and for his sport and for his team, he, he had uh, very good uh, accomplishments in the sport. So I like him, but I'm not friends with him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because as English speakers, it's hard for us to gauge a fighter's personality when they're not speaking English, obviously. You know, just like if they don't speak English, they can't understand me. Me, they can see that I'm running around and laughing and being stupid and dumb. And they're like, this guy's a f- idiot. They know <laughs> that. But they can't tell what we're saying is funny or whatever. What is Charles Oliveira like? What what, what do you hear? Is he, is he a funny guy? Is he calm? Because he always seems very intense. But I only see him in the fight environment. Yeah, that's good. I don't think... Maybe he's funny, like with the friends and stuff, but I, I feel like he's an intense guy, like you say, and I think he's very religious, you know? Nah, I think I he's guess. very, very, very religious, you know? The vibes that I get from him is that, like, very religious, very humble, uh, like, was poor when he was a kid, so I think he's very grateful for God all the time, and that's the vibe that he gave me, because we, we were cutting weight at the same sauna, at the PI, and he was like with uh, like um, religious songs all the time, praising God, and that. So I think he is that style uh, usually. But I think with his friends, he, he probably is, is very funny. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I want to talk about his fight in just a second. So you're not a religious man, Hanato? No, I am a religious man. I am a religious okay. man. Yeah, yeah. Is is there anybody in Brazil that isn't a religious man? No, I it's you hard. Said, yeah, I know. Is everybody religious? Like, like everybody. What happens if you meet somebody and they're not a religious guy? Do you you all like <laughs> get him? It's no. the devil. <laughs> no, no. I think it is the roots, right? It's the roots of like, uh, especially because we were colonized by Portuguese and they went to Brazil to to spread the word, right? To to, to to, to put the Catholicism and, and they build schools and they like converted the people. So 90% of the population is Catholic or mm-hmm. like it's, they are Christians. And, and and it's funny because if you see a Brazilian, if you tell them something about God, they're going to love you, brother. If, yeah. Especially if they're fighting. If you go and say, Godspeed, God going to help you, they, they go crazy, my brother. Brazilians <laughs> love that. So, so I, I am not being disrespectful, okay? Uh-huh. But, I, but I've got a question for you, and I would love to know the answer because I always, what's the word? Every time, and Brazilians always do it, okay? And I love Brazilians. I love all people, you know, as yeah. long as you're not a dickhead. Yeah. You know? uh, and I'm sure you're the same way. Um, and, and any fighter, not just Brazilians, any fighters, when they win and then they thank God, right? Yeah. And I always think, well, what about the guy that lost? And, yes. and what about that time when you lost a fight? And then I think, if there is a God, does he not have better things to do than monitoring that cage fight in Salt Lake City? Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> you, you know, I know what, what I mean? you mean. Of course, I know what you mean. So, so that's why I, when I pray, I pray to to be uh, to not that, to not get hurt and to not hurt my opponent and like. Everything happens for a reason. And maybe God is letting you lose because you need to learn something. And and, and let me tell you something. The moments oh. that I'm, I learned most of my life when I was, when I lose. Every time mm-hmm. that I lost, I learned about myself 
So I think God lets you lose so you can learn and then you can be victorious. Actually, it depends on you, of course, but a little help is, is never bad, right? So no. God has been helping me a lot. Good. And I hope he continues to do so. A little bit of help, a little bit of luck goes a long way. 100%. And it's funny. Yeah, every time I used to fight, same thing, same thing. Like when I fought Anderson Silva, right before the fight started, we went to the center, the referee reads that, you know, we want a fair fight, and all, all that type of thing. I We hoped, and I said, good luck, yeah. good luck. You know, but it didn't mean good luck. I hope you win the fight. I mean, yeah. I hope we all go back to our families and everything's fine. Yeah. Um, so to, to, Charles Oliveira went out there Saturday night, tough fight against Armin Sarukian, right? Sarukian... I kind of felt like he might have the antidote, the style to Charles. Charles is one of my favorite fighters. He's one of the most exciting fighters in all of the UFC. What was your thoughts on that fight? Charles is very dangerous. He can finish the fight in every point of the, of the fight. But with the wrestling and if the ground and pound and his youth, right? And his style, like the ground and pound and the elbows, I think Sarukian is a... Uh, hard opponent for, for everybody. He is he is very tough. The way he survived the guillotines and the submissions attempt, that shows he's a man on a mission. And like you say, our wrestler is always a tough match for a jiu-jitsu guy. You have to be aware of that. And I wish Charles uh, stand a little bit more on the striking, like outside, right? But he always too much aggressive. He always like fighting on the pocket. I don't think that's good, especially if you fight a wrestler. Sarukian, if he get on top of you, he's going to make a lot of damage. And he even sweep Charles. So he's very, uh, he's a very good fighter. Oh, no, he's high level. I, I tell you what, I was impressed with uh, Charles because when Sarukian slipped, when the fight first started, and he gets the guillotine, yeah. and then he jumps to the guillotine, I'm like, oh, this is it. It's over. Because yes. that was in deep. But then yes. somebody was telling me that they rolled with Sarukian recently, and apparently he's just, impossible to choke out and then i saw yeah. him doing some breathing exercises i saw that too yeah you saw that i saw Have that you ever, too you ever done breathing exercises yeah. to not get choked out yeah i never i never heard about them my brother. <laughs> and i don't i don't think they're gonna work either no no <laughs> the but, russian but, guys right they were in the street like and doing this stuff i saw yeah. that i don't know but it's good for the promotion right you have seen oh, no. that shit yeah, of course, of course. But the way Charles jumped to the guillotine and he had both legs, you know, the full guard closed, and then he was able to turn it into a mounted guillotine and trying that, I was very impressed. Uh, I thought it was the correct decision, you know. I thought it was 100%. the correct decision. I think yeah. I think he won in a decision, in, in unanimous decision. For me, it was not split. I think it was easy. I, I think the judges, they, they gave too much for Charles because the submissions attempt. But if you see control time, like uh, takedowns and and uh, scored by the the punches. I think Sarukian did a great job. Yeah, no, one hundred percent agree. What was your favorite fight of the night? Of course, Max Holloway and Justin Gage. That was oh unbelievable. God, we haven't even spoke about that. Holy shit! Unbelievable. That Max Holloway is a, such a gangster, my brother. It's impossible to not like Max Holloway. It's impossible to not like Max Holloway. You, you, I mean, we're going to talk about the fight in a second, but like even after the fight, when he was asked, getting asked about Ilya Taporia on ESPN, didn't say anything bad. So yeah. respectful. Because Ilya Taporia was just like, yeah, he looked yeah. bored or a blank expression, or maybe yeah. he was just tired or yeah. who knows, you know, he could have twisted that. Max Holloway could have said, look, look at that. Yeah, I wouldn't be chatting shit either. I'd be keeping my mouth closed. That's right. Ilya Taporia doesn't want this. But he was like, no, maybe he's just a, quiet guy maybe he's socially awkward and i'm like max your legend just keeps getting bigger i mean how can you not love this guy now let's talk about the fight that fight ridiculous as we know i think just engaging made a lot of mistakes a lot of mistakes a lot of i think everybody i was underestimating Char uh, not charles uh, max too because i thought okay uh hallway he has a lot of volume but he's not a power puncher right so i thought he would like try to overwhelm Gaethje with volume, but uh, Gaethje would land the, the better shots and he would, be, he, he would beat Max in a decision. I was completely wrong. I think 155 Max is the better version of Max. He, he looked strong. I think he put a lot of weight. You know, he's strong. I don't think he should go back to 145. Even though I would like to see him against Topura, I think on, on a 50 fight, 
especially a performance like that, I think he is, of course, uh, a contender on this division too. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you go in a minute because I know you're running out of time. But yeah, so for Justin Gagey, he was trying to knock him out with every single shot. And you know, anytime you work with a striking coach, they always tell you, don't look for the knockout. When you're looking for the knockout, you generally don't find it. You load up, you telegraph. If you miss, you're going to be off balance. And that's every single shot. And granted, that's what makes him exciting. But I think the fact that he knocked out Dustin Poirier, the fact that he's known for his power, I yeah. think he just thought, I'll catch him. I'll just keep yeah, swinging exactly. and I'm going to get him. you got to set things up. When you look at Max on the flip side, he's on the outside, he's calm, he's jabbing, he's going to the body, he's moving around the ring. The footwork was beautiful. The spinning back kick to the face that almost knocked him out at the end of round one. I think that played a big factor. And then from there, it just started going downhill for Justin the entire way. And then, 10 seconds left in the fight. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine? <laughs> That's crazy. Imagine if you're coaching a fighter, yeah. right? You're coaching a fighter. Uh, um, you're coaching a fighter, all right, Hanato, and it's a big fight. It's UFC. You're going up a weight class. You're fighting Justin Gagey. Everyone says you're going to get knocked out, and you're winning. Not only are you winning, you almost finished him on multiple occasions. It's not even close. And then with 10 seconds left, you point at the ground and say, "Hit." It. Let's just go for Let's it. Let's just go, yeah. Let's just yeah. have a tear up. If you yeah. were coaching them, you'd be like, what are you doing? Unbelievable. But that's what's making him legendary, you know? To be legendary, to be a, a fan favorite, you have to do these things. You have to create your brand mark. And he has his brand. And it's this, my brother. When he does that, you better run because Max Hall is going to knock you the f out of you, my brother. And he did that with Ricardo Lamas. And yep. man, it was just a beautiful finish for a great card. I think that made UFC 300 even more special. I think that's going to go to the history, one of the best cards, especially because that fight in Pereira was just amazing. Yeah, no, that was the highlight of the night for sure. What Pereira did was phenomenal, but of course that that stole it. That yeah, because five rounds, five rounds in a knockout against Gaethje, you're going up in the division, crazy. With, with one second. With one, one second, second. This, exactly. this is not an original yeah. thought. Everybody's no. been saying it. Oh, it was no. like something out of a movie. But yeah. if you saw that in a movie, yeah. like in a Rocky film, you'd say bullshit. That's, That's bullshit. too far fetched. Exactly. That's too far. Nobody gets yeah. knocked out with no. one second left. It's, Especially it just... winning the fight, right? Taking the risk and doing that. This is a movie thing. You, you're right. Yeah, Please. no, it was amazing. All right, listen, I know you're very busy. We've probably kept you a little bit too late. First of all, what's the name of the podcast with you and Gilbert? Show Me The Money podcast. And we have a Money Moicano channel. And I want to say something too. If you want to support the cause, moneymoicano.com and buy some merch, okay? Thank you so much. I, for I, got, I got one more question. Yes, of course. When are you going to have me on the show? I don't want to bother you. I know you are busy, brother, man. You I no, no, no. I, I saw you on, on every pay-per-view, my brother. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother you. I know you are busy, bro. Man. Bro, busy is an understatement. But here's what I do: anytime people come and do my podcast, like you have and Gilbert have, I always repay the favor. If they've ever been yes. on my podcast, then that's just the deal. You know what I'm saying? So, of course. I, and I've got so much respect for you and Gilbert. So I would love to come on as long as you speak in English and not Portuguese. Perfect. We, we're going to do in English. I'm going to talk with Gilbert. Maybe we do next week. I, I, I will message okay. you. And if you can, it's going to be great. And it's going to That's help cool. us. Okay. Right. Renato, you are the man. Congratulations on a sensational victory. You deserve all the success. I'm a fan for life. You take care. Thank you so much. I am your biggest fan, my brother. Always uh, remember you that. that. You too, can. Take care, brother.